floating snacks. What's going on, everybody? Your boy Sin coming at you straight from the Anime Vault. That's right, Anime Vault is back, but with a slight twist. Now we're going retro. I'm going to take the time and focus on the animes that I grew up on that made me into the fan that I am today. So with that, I was thinking, where do I start with doing something like that? Like, what was the beginning for me with anime? Uh, and I focused on one thing in particular, it was, it was Robotech. That's where it all started. Sitting with my uncles in the base of my grandmother's house, watching Robotech, being fascinated by it. So I decided to revisit that and start this segment with that. Now, for those out there who do not know what Robotech is, I will break down the story for you. So the story starts with the Earth is in the midst of like a World War III type thing. Everybody's at war. An alien ship comes down, crash lands on an island. We all decide to stop fighting ourselves and let's focus on that because obviously there's something bigger out there than ourselves. So over the next few years, next, next lot of years, they send their scientists, their brightest, all to this island. They end up building a city around it. They call it a Macross City. Now, years later, it's time for the inaugural voyage. We're gonna go to the stars, we're gonna see what's out there, yada, yada, yada. Now, our main character comes in, Rick Hunter, who's coming to visit his friend slash brother, Roy, because he wants to show him what Robotech is all about. Rick's not, not really into the military thing. He doesn't know why Roy left to go do this. He doesn't understand it, so they're having that dialogue there. And the aliens show up to get their shit back. And as you can kind of guess, all hell breaks loose. Now, one of, the main thing, one of the main things about the story that's very, very interesting, they do get away from that initial attack in the SDF-1, which is the name of the main fortress. But they end up taking the ship, the, not the ship, they end up taking the island with them, a part of it, the city itself into space with them. So now they have to take these 70,000 survivors and the city and fit them inside the ship. So now they're on the run from the aliens trying to stay alive with a city full of civilians inside the ship while they're trying to do their thing and it's that balance that they're trying to all figure out and work with together. Very interesting, but I love that aspect of the story. It stuck me all these years. So I'm not gonna be the whole, should you take the time out your busy schedule to give this one a watch? Cause I do actually. Uh, so let's just start at the beginning with the intro. Does it still slap? Like, is it still fire? That intro music? Uh, it does. It's not in the same typical form of where you have like an actual song and a singer and all that kind of stuff. It's mainly just like a war battle cry, like a battle hymn that they're playing. But it fits well with the visuals they're showing. And when it comes on, you know it's Robotech. So you instantly kind of get into it, have a great time with it, just enjoy it. So yeah, I will say it still holds up after all this time. Now, the characters themselves, do they hold up? I'm gonna say yes. Uh, to most of the characters, there's a lot of substance, a lot of depth to them. Like, they're not, the, when the show ends, they're not the same characters that they were in the beginning, if you know what I'm saying. Like, you see growth in them all. And let's understand something. I'm not talking about the entire Robotech saga, no. Just Super Dimensional Fortress, the very first one. This is the one that, if you want to get into Robotech, if you want to get into Macross itself, this is where you start at. You learn about Rick, Lisa, Min Mei, all that kind of stuff. You learn about the SDF-1 and its importance. So like, you know, me and jokes, we go and we, we try to find these big series to watch and we're looking like, okay, we're so far behind, where do we start? This is where you would start for this one. Uh, so let's move on to the next thing, which is the genre itself. How does it hold up after all this time? Um, this is a space opera and this is where Robotech shines at its best. Uh, it, does, it does what it does best here. It's filled with action, adventure, romance, music, love. It hits on all cylinders and it does it real well and it still feels good after these 35 years to sit down and watch these action sequences again. It's something about the 80s style, that nostalgia that's felt real good sitting down and watching it. Uh, and the love story itself, which is a very main component of this show, it still hits after all these years and I can draw parallels to what they're going through, what's Rick going through, to a 2020 aspect. Like, come on now. Look, we've all been there, right? You're doing your thing. You got the young girl, you know, you like her. She's, y'all having these moments and connections, but then in the next thing, she's friend zone. You're like, oh no, that's just my brother. Like, yeah, but last week, it, last week that wasn't the case. You know what I mean? But oh, at work, you got this young in there, older, the more mature. Y'all both have a passion for what y'all doing. That connection start happening. And then what happens? A little shorty come back around, throw you that bone. Like, oh, ha ha, wink, wink. Like, oh, now you're back on that again. Y'all know how the game is played. You see that there. It translates very well to nowadays. Uh, I think y'all really enjoyed it if you, you know, decide to take a look at it if you haven't seen it before. Why does this resonate with me? Besides my uncle's put me all to and having good memories of that. Uh, 
for starters, people actually died in the show. Like, it's not like a G.I. Joe where like, you know Duke's not gonna die. You know Snake Eyes is gonna die or any of those characters. This, people died, did not come back. Not just like pointless soldiers, but like main characters died and didn't come back. And that's something you just didn't see like on the Saturday morning cartoons. You know what I mean? Uh, also, the Veritech fighters itself, I thought were some of the coolest things flying. I still think they are. Like, they're so dope. They made a Transformer one of them. Ever heard of Jetfire? That is a Veritech fighter. Point blank. It is a, and he's obviously my favorite Transformer because he's a Veritech fighter. But yeah, that's how dope those planes were. Also, the love story. Even at a young age, it just hit with me. Like, I'm, I'm a sucker for having a great love story in the middle of action and adventure. Like, that's just me. That's my bag. Like, I love it. Uh, and it just stuck with me after all this time. Overall, does it stand up to the test of time? I'm gonna say absolutely. Uh, the closest thing I could compare it to is Gundam. Like, Gundam, Robotech. Like, those are... They're that with each other, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of Gundams, there's a lot of Robotechs. I would say, go down that Robotech hole, go down that Macross hole. I have at least two of them in that category that I hold in very, very high regards. Uh, I think you would like it and enjoy it if you haven't seen it before, so yeah, give it a look. It's one of my favorites, and that's why I decided to talk about it here. Uh, but do me a favor, let me know in the comments below how do you feel about it? What's been your favorite Robotech saga throughout the years? Uh, were you team Minmay or were you team Lisa? Leave it in the comments below, and with that, I'll catch you later. What's going on, everybody? Did you enjoy what you saw? Of course you did. So if you want to help us out and support us, here's what you can do. On whatever platform you're currently streaming us on, just like, share, and subscribe. Then head over to patreon.com forward slash lonely snacks and become one of our patrons there.